but it seems one mustn't judge by the outside is an extract from The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot. It was a novel written in 1860, and that statement has since been reiterated and altered over generations, to what is now commonly phrased as, don't judge a book by its cover. The idiom is advice to consider when approaching first impressions, to not judge something or someone from outward appearance alone. And there's merit in the saying, first impressions hold a strong influence towards everything we approach. As told by psychologists Janine Willis and Alexander Todorov, who researched exposure time regarding first impressions, it takes a mere tenth of a second to form an impression of a stranger from their face alone. And this, of course, can be applied to book covers too, especially if we want to take the idiom quite literally. There are books out there of which I'm unbothered by the cover, but absolutely love the story, and vice versa too. Books with stunning covers that, well, let's just say their Goodreads rating for me isn't many stars. And to clarify, I think having positive or negative impressions towards a cover is perfectly fine. That's the nature of a cover design. Whilst its primary function is to promote and grab attention, consumers' impressions are still personal taste. Whether an onlooker has an intrigued or unbothered reaction is entirely individual. And yet, people still find a need to insult artists' work and unfairly dismiss the book as a result of distaste. The topic of judgement continues to be discussed only when talking about ugly covers. And to just quickly add a disclaimer, for this video I will mostly be referring to fictional covers, as they're challenged by the don't judge a book by its cover idiom the most. This is largely due to non-fictional books relying on photography or realistic imagery to show whoever or whatever subject is the focus of the book. They're very much a what you see is what you get type of scenario, though there are a few abstract exceptions here or there that will relate to points further in the video. On the flip side, fictional books heavily lean on creative art rather than photography, allowing for more styles to fill each and every bookshelf. And this is where the discourse lies as having such a large variety of styles to choose from opens an array of subjective thoughts. But it also means each book can stand out in their own way. Because one of the main marketing tools for books are their covers. Covers can be universal, visuals being an element that can communicate across languages and cultures. A cover has the power to summarise a 600-page book into a sole illustration, hence the other known idiom, a picture is worth a thousand words. And covers are essential for not only standing out in bookstores, but online too. With a mass emergence of ebooks, especially after the release of Kindle devices, and online shopping on the rise, book covers have essentially become thumbnail sized posters. Rows and rows of book covers being the only selling point besides the title and price. Not only that, but as told by Forbes, consumers spend significantly more per visit in store than online. So those first impressions from a web page are even more crucial, as people are spending less money online and are more likely to scroll to another book more quickly. But even with this slight upper hand for physical sales, with the increase of ebook profits, publishers hurried into pushing for bolder covers, and testing the limits of what consumers were willing to pay for. Selling not just a book, but something to show off, to display for others to stare at, from a product to a precious collectible which is where special editions started to pop up more. Books with foil, sprayed edges, box sets with continuous spines, limited editions and exclusive covers. Even book subscription services have been on the rise, capitalising on the increased interest in physical books with exclusive attributes that an ebook just can't replicate nor deliver. And as it happens, comic books follow this persuasive tactic too, selling multiple versions of the same physical volume with an exclusive variant cover designed by another well-known artist. Manga as well, more so outside of English publications, will have special edition covers for enthusiastic readers to collect. Now, personally, I'm someone that will buy all books digitally first, and if the book is one I end up loving, I will also buy it physically for later rereads and, to be completely honest, to show off on my shelves too. And whilst that admittance may be superficial consumerism, that's exactly the way book covers have been treated of recent. Just look at TikTok, YouTube or Instagram. There's videos of bookcase organising, aesthetic photos complete with props, recommendation videos, and just millions of hashtags about books. And in all of that content, the cover is always on show. Because to reiterate, it's no longer just a book. It's something people deem worthy of showing off, 
which is exactly why a cover's art direction can be so important, and a vital element towards book sales. Something to keep in consideration when judging a book cover is that they're all created under different circumstances. Not every single cover will be an extravagant, beautifully constructed masterpiece like Corey Brickley's art for the UK edition of Immortal Longings. Some covers will be homemade or created by someone with no design experience, and this is particularly the case within the indie scene, where authors don't have the same access to resources or money in general to commission artists for covers. And indie authors within minority groups deal with this the most, their stories being disregarded due to an ugly cover of which they don't have the chance to improve on until being picked up by a publisher or until one of their novels blows up in popularity. Given the prejudice racial minority groups experience whilst trying to get officially published, many authors of colour, in particular black authors, have to jump through hoops to find publishing opportunities. And as showcased through the hashtag publishing paid me trend on Twitter, even professionally established black authors face massive disparities in advanced payments compared to white authors. Even author N.K. Jemison, a black woman who is the only person ever to win three Hugo Awards in a row, was given lower advance payments than white authors for their debut books, despite her being an award-winning author. And due to homophobia and transphobia towards LGBT plus authors, or stories that contain themes of such issues, many books are completely banned in certain areas, in combination with blatant discrimination in general, that makes queer stories much harder to get picked up as well. So whilst some indie covers aren't the prettiest, it's best to keep in mind that there's amazing stories hidden behind them, I mean, even my favourite book of all time is an indie book that has a very stock, picturesque cover, but those 1054 pages completely change my brain chemistry. So I'm glad I gave it a shot, plus it's completely free to read online. But outside of indie publishing, unless the author is fortunate enough, most books will have commissioned an artist to design their cover. From a marketing point of view, a cover is there to visually summarise and promote the story or match its tone whilst persuading those within the target audience to pick it up. Everything from colours, typography to illustration style play a part in drawing attention to the book. And some authors may have a say in the cover's concept, or what vibes they think are suitable, but more often than not, the direction of the cover is given to marketing specialists and editors to give to an artist. Some books, if successful enough, will also garner several covers for overseas releases, as evidenced by author John Green on the Vlogbrothers channel. The Anthropocene Reviewed is my sixth book, but because of reprints and foreign editions and so on, I've had over a hundred covers for my book, some of which I didn't particularly care for, some of which I absolutely adore, and then there are some that are just wondrous in their strangeness, like the Swedish cover of Turtles All the Way Down. Therefore, the idea of judging a book by its cover becomes nonsensical in a way. Because whilst you may not like the UK version of a cover, you could like the US version. It's not like the story becomes any different depending on the outside. But it does prove each country has different markets and tastes, enough for publishing companies to predict a potential dip in sales because of this, and therefore commission different covers to tackle that issue. And that same thought process determines which cover style to choose from, whether typographic, portraiture, minimalistic, abstract, or illustrative in different complexities, narrowing down which style suits a book more is all researched and analysed for the sake of marketing and profits. As styles can be more fitting depending on genre, or the target audience's age, etc. For example, if we were to take a look at my sister's book collection compared to my own, you'll definitely see a pattern in genre and cover style. My sister loves romance and classical books, and from her collection you'll either see the bold colours with a minimalistic style that Emily Henry and Ali Hazelwood novels are known for, or the decorative covers with floral patterns that are the trend for classical books right now. And whilst those covers aren't really for me, they certainly work for their audiences, as my sister and her friends loved them. My own collection, however, consists of complex illustrative covers that are pretty common within the fantasy, horror, sci-fi and action genres. The grand nature of those genres benefit from detailed illustrations showcasing their fictional worlds that wouldn't work so naturally within the genres my sister reads. It's all a matter of purpose and what sits naturally within the genre, story and vibe. But speaking of action mystery stories, the ad for this video is sponsored by the author of Sunset Phoenix, an original webtoon series I fell in love with from the first episode. 
an immortal is dead and you're holding the murder weapon is the perfect tagline to introduce a modern fantasy series that dips its toes into magic, lesbians, stunning character designs, action, mystery and murder. Being caught red-handed for the death of an immortal being, main character Amelia is helped by another immortal named Valentine, who treats death as a tool for survival rather than finality, in finding the true culprit before all hell breaks loose. With the fresh world building and an intriguing exploration of spellcasting, Sunset Phoenix is an addictive tale depicted through a charismatic art style distinctive in its colour coding palettes. Every character is charming in their own way, but main characters Amelia and Valentine are a fascinating duo in the making. With banter, tension and flirtations in the mix, it's the unpredictability sprinkled with well-timed humour that makes them work so well together. It's available to read on Webtoon via the app or web, of which I'll include a link in my description. I want to give a lovely shout out to the author Never Draws for sponsoring this video and introducing me to another series I'll be following without question. As touched on earlier, there's plenty of different cover styles to be found in the world of literature. The only style I would genuinely complain about visually are the eyesores that are movie adaptation book covers, that are clearly made for marketing and opportunistic reasons. But they're relatively harmless as long as they don't replace the ability or make it harder to buy the original book, as it's never a bad thing for authors to gain more profit, especially in such a competitive industry. Also, it increases the potential to get more non-readers into reading too, meaning I'll let them begrudgingly slide. So, a question remains, can you judge a book by its cover? Well, yes, you can. It's an innate reaction to judge something at first glance, but it's the emotional intelligence to question said judgement and rethink your quick evaluation that allows openness to outweigh scepticism. Through revising your own preconceptions and giving every book a chance instead, there's a likelihood of loving a story you once would have ignored. The question, rather, should be worded as, should you judge a book by its cover? And to that, I'd lean more towards no. Whilst there are people who hate on book covers because the style is not to their taste, I'd much rather have quote-unquote ugly cover designs that are made by humans than have AI take yet another fantastic opportunity away from artists. When a cover is the first thing you see when walking through a bookstore, surfing online, watching an advert or scrolling on social media, I'd argue the cover is more important now than ever before. And with that in mind, I don't see why the value of the cover artist should be so minimal, with some books placing their names in very small print on the back or blended into the copyright page. They should be more visible in a way that doesn't outshine the author, but sits in conjunction while slightly lower in the design hierarchy as it's the quick impression of a book's cover, those milliseconds of judgement and the swift impression that forms, which could be the make or break of a sale. Hey guys, thanks for watching to the end of the video. As always, I want to give a shout out to my patrons over on Patreon, if you can believe, for helping support the channel and pushing me through these last few months where I haven't really released a video so AdSense hasn't been very nice to me. And also to the sponsor of this video, and like I said in the video, I've put a link in the description so you can check out that Webtoon series, which is, it is so good guys. I don't take on sponsors very frequently, but Neverjaws got in contact with me in terms of sponsoring this video. I checked out the Webtoon and absolutely love it. I know a lot of you guys read comics and Webtoons, etc., etc. so, it just felt like the perfect match, really. I decided to push this video forward instead of doing my Claymore video just because one, I kind of needed a little break from manga editing and two, the sponsorship kind of pushed my deadlines forward a little bit more and I just wouldn't have got the Claymore video done in time. So that has been pushed to the next video, but it shouldn't take that long to do because I've already done all the analyzing and everything. So also do let me know in the comments if there are any book covers that you really, really love and grabbed your attention straight away. I've got a lot of book covers that I really love and some that are okay, but I love the story as I kind of touched on in the video. So let me know your thoughts on the video and the topic itself. But other than that, I'll be catching you guys next time with a Claymore video.